Amen. Thank you. Today I want to share very quickly with you on none of these diseases. Exodus chapter 15 and verse number 26. It reads, And said, If you diligently heed the voice, the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ears to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. Today our world is living in fear. We had to cut in here to pause the series on I love my church. So we just remind you of God's promises concerning what is happening in our world. What is happening is just the beginning of many things that are going to happen. Now you hear of Corona. Tomorrow you will hear of Nanako or something. There's, in the last days, the Bible talks about plagues happening to the earth. The Bible talks about bad news everywhere. But there is a word over the righteous. Somebody say a word. God wants us to be still. Is it that the threats are not there? The threats are there. But there's a word. Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 10 reads. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Somebody said, the Lord is holding me. Fear is defined, you can write this down, as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that something terrible, something unpleasant, something evil, something tragic is going to happen. Fear is an unpleasant emotion that is caused by the feeling that something evil is about to happen. And this is prevalent when we choose to live by what we see than by what God says to us. The volume of fear or the percentage of fear in you is determined by the percentage of the word of God you ignore. The potency of threat in your being by things in the environment is determined by how much you yield to what you see than what God says. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 25. God said. Do not be afraid of sudden terror. The one that you haven't seen that, oh, that happened here and that happened here in America. Some places they are not going to work again. People are buying their house. Now, now, now let, me, let me really ask you. If God is to bring more trouble to the earth. Walmart cannot supply the food you will need for the days it will last. No farm has the capacity. So the, the, the earlier you switch to faith, the better for you. Do you know how much nations are losing every hour of the day due to coronavirus? We told them there's hellfire, they didn't believe. Now they saw corona. They believe. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. Verse 26. Loud I read with me, want to go. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Can you just stomp your foot? Say, My foot is preserved. It's preserved. So how does God want us to deal with fear? How does God want us to deal with the confrontations? Somebody say fear not. So how does God want you to deal with these things happening in our world today? Talk back to me. How does God want you to deal with the issues that are happening around us? You need to say it like living prophets, not dead prophets. How does God want you to deal with coronavirus? That's the spirit. Fear not. Does it mean the threats are not real? They are real. But we have a higher law. 
a higher force. Now, does it mean we should throw caution into the wind? No. You must, as a believer, in fact, in the book of Exodus or so, God was telling them that when they go out in the wilderness to defecate, they should dig the ground and bury it because God believes in hygiene. So tell your neighbor, wash your hands with soap and water, flowing water especially. Tell them use sanitizers like you did when you came into church today. Clean your house. Maintain hygiene. Cut short your nails so you can disinfect inside those places properly. Uh, maintain the normal. Yes. When you want to cough, cough into your, your elbow. All those are to see. No, don't do that. Take lots of vitamins, eat fruits and vegetables. In fact, take more of lemonades. Lemonade is not a juice from America. It's just lemon, slice of lemon inside your water. That works. Stay healthy. Because this body, God wants to use it for many years to come. So it's not going to die now. Koro or no koro. So God's word is clear. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19. Isaiah 43, 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In Exodus chapter 23, I think verse 15 or so, or 25, he says, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread. Say, My bread and my water are blessed. Read the last line with a loud voice with me, and I will. Stand up to your feet like prophets of God. Say, and I will want to go. Somebody say, there's a word. Say to the swag. Say, there's a word. Sit down. In Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17, it says, no weapon. In the air, on the land, in the sea. Somebody shout, no weapon. This thing happening in our world is telling you where the world is going to. Times are going to change. Things are going to change. But we will be safe. Put it up on the screen again. It said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Lift your right hand and say, declare, I declare today that every tongue against me is condemned in Jesus' name. Therefore, no trace of sickness and disease or their symptoms have right to rule in my sphere. Corona or no corona, I'm living in divine health, me and my household, in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus has paid the ultimate price for my health, my wealth, and my internal safety. Glory, hallelujah. Is anybody praising the Lord? Fear is a very terrible thing. It will do these things to you if you don't watch it. Number one, it will keep you from God's from from it will keep you from doing God's will. You will live in fear. When people greet you, you will not answer. How long can you last? A scientist was talking about social distancing. He said, "Okay, we should keep social social distancing." You've forgotten the mental the mental implication of that too. So this corona it comes with multiple edged sword. We say, okay, stay at home. Why some people are dying of loneliness? They're already challenged mentally. And they need love from people. So, social distance. The devil is a bad devil. He wants to ruin lives. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but why did God allow it? God allowed it because he has made safety available to them that believe. 
But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. My bishop will say, life abundantly. Overflowing life. It will keep you, number two, it will keep you from enjoying life. Look at yesterday, some, some people got angry in Australia. They got angry and they all went into the beach. Thousands of people went to the beach side. They said, this, this weather is uncommon in Australia. So they were all diving, skating. They were doing all, color, all kind of things they were doing. Enjoying themselves. They said, don't you fear? They said, anyway, we're trying to keep uh, one meter, one and a half meter away from each other. But you see, we are just okay, man. <laughs> ah. You can only do that when you have eternal life on your inside. I'm telling you the truth. This disease is very real. It's very real. I'm telling you, this disease is real. It's very real. But you know what? Our, the power at work in us is more real. Yeah. Uh, more real. Number three, it will steal from you. Number four, it will cause you to be weak in your flesh and in your mind. Number five, it will retain you in bondage. It will lock you up inside bondage. Number six, it will cause you to be sick. Because when you are sick in your mind, your body begins to respond like that. Understand how fear works. Number one, fear works. Fear makes happen what you keep in view. If you keep fear in view, it will make your view happen. Number two, fear creates what you keep imagining. So it has the power to create your fears. Your fears have powers to create itself and make it your physical reality. That's why you should not fear. Number three, fear is contagious. When you sit around very fearful people, you find yourself enveloped in fear. People have normal flu. People have normal cough. People have normal, 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 normal things. That, is, that should not be normal for the believer. But when fear is there, you cough once, you hear ko. You cough twice, you hear ro. Then you cough the third time. Ah, nah. <laughs> Even when you are choking from eating something, something enters your wrong, your wrong throat and you just... Ah, <coughs> And fear is also number four. Fear is transferable from person, from generation to generation. That's why you as parents, as intending parents, should kill your fears. Job, what did Job say? He said, the things that I fear the most have come upon me. I declare over you, no fear will overtake your life in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24, the Bible says, the fear of the wicked will come upon him and the desire of the righteous will be granted. Take note that when God gives us his promises, it's not because we are infallible. God knows that you will make mistakes but he has, he has made provision for you. God does not love you because you do not do wrong. He loves you because you are his child. So it will not take your, your, it will not take your good behavior towards God as his child or your mistakeless life or faultless life towards God for God to guarantee your safety. Because in the kingdom, there's what they call internal cleaning system. It works by the word of God we hear, cleansing us, washing of the water by the word, Ephesians chapter 5. As this word keeps coming and we keep believing it, our bad character begins to go away. But that's not what guarantees it's not, what, it's not what guarantees God's acceptance and his protection over our lives. In Luke chapter 1 verse 74, the Bible says, To grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of the enemies, might serve him without fear. Hebrews chapter 11 says that we should come boldly. In the book of Hebrews, it says we should come boldly, approach the throne of grace, boldly. So, while you are trying, the devil is trying to accuse you to tell you that this corona will kill you because you, are, you, 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 you sinned yesterday. Tell him that my sins have been paid for. And because he has made me righteous, I have right to enjoy good life. Am I talking to some people this morning? 
So, the only fear we are permitted to have is the fear of the Lord, which is reverence, the worship to God, honor to his, to his word and his will. Not to live in fear of terror. Like they go so come, they so come, you read, they don't come. No. Our lives are above that level. So even if you are sick, you can be healed. Even if you have disease in your body, you can be healed. Because he says, I am the Lord that heals you. Amen. In Luke chapter 5, we saw Jesus. Verse 12. Luke 5, verse 12. The Bible says, and it happened when he was in a certain city. That behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and fell on his face. Implored him saying, read with me. Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. What did he say in verse 13? Then he put, ah, if it's today, don't say don't touch. If it's today, don't say don't touch. So you don't contact leprosy. But the Bible says that Jesus put his hands and touched him saying, louder, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy. Do you know the life we carry is the life of God? And every day he keeps saying, I am willing, be thou cleansed. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I'm willing, be thou cleansed. So God wants you here. So wherever you are, at home, watching by, by the internet or inside this hall, whatever sickness in your body is in your body, put your hand right there right now. Because the willing Jesus is about to do miracle again. He's about to do miracle again. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our hands to you and curse every trace of sickness and disease in the people. Right now, we command both the infirmities and their symptoms to die of them right now in the name of Jesus. I command a healing to your tissues, to your cells, to your fibers. Be healed. And made every week whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus makes you whole. Amen. So, if you are going to enjoy God's blessings and enjoy God's protection for the rest of your life, all you need to do is to believe his promises and confess them over your life. In Isaiah chapter 63 verse 26 verse 3. Isaiah 26 verse 3. He says you will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. Somebody say I trust in God. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah. The Lord. Is everlasting strength. In Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 10. Verse 22. Stand up to your feet. The Bible says, Moses lifted up his hands to the sky. And a deep cloud covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. Read verse 23 with me. During all that time, the people could not see each other. That was how dark the, cloud, the darkness was. And no one moved. Oh, you didn't see that. You didn't see that. Read it again like you saw it. I love the term as usual. Health is usual. Healing is usual. Miracles as usual. The darkness was so thick that you will not see your next neighbor standing by your side. But not in the place where the children of Israel were. Ah, oh, my case is different. Lift up your hands and thank him. I desire you. Lift your hands and thank him. Begin to declare that over my family, over my business, over my every neighbor. I desire you. Jesus, I desire you. I desire you. I desire you, 
Jesus, I desire you. I speak over you. That by the hand that made the heavens and I promised to sustain you, you shall be sustained. Sickness and disease shall not reign in your life, shall not reign in your family, shall not reign in your midst, saith the Lord. I declare over it, over you so in Jesus' name. I rebuke every trace of sickness, be it cancer, fibroid, HIV, AIDS, whatever the, the, the disease may be, coronavirus. We speak to it in the name of Jesus. Be gone. Be gone. Be gone. Only with your eyes you will behold the reward of the wicked because it shall not come near you. The hand that keeps the world protects you. Protect you from harm. Protect you from shame. Protect you from disgrace. Protect you from lack. You are living an abundance of health. Abundance of heaven's supply. In the name of Jesus. Why men are crying, there is a casting down. I declare over you and your household, there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed by the God of heaven and earth. You are blessed by the keeper of Zion. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and praise the Lord.